Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to the next uh, episode review for Dashihime, Prin uh, Pr Princess Half Demon Season 2, Episode 5, The Girl, the, uh, the girl Named Rion. And as we, as we established now that uh, Rion is the daughter of Kirimaru, and they're all inside the, of, the, of Mount, 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 Mount Subi, so, and now they have established the world that uh, what, what we have, what we're now, is we're established that what Rion has is she has the uh, the Kilkion root, and now she's a, she's a, she's a, she's a she's a spirit now, and because getting ahead in this episode that uh, we learn more about it about Rion that uh, she died six hundred years ago, and although it doesn't explain how she died though, she says she just died six hundred years ago, and that Kiri Maru uh, sealed her in this. Uh, we're, we're in the previous episode where she was laying, sitting on top of this giant green... It looked like an egg, though, but it's not, though. But she, he sealed her in a side note, but basically like her soul or something like that. Because even though um, we know that as a kid, Maru, he, has, a, he has, a, has this thing about honor and all that stuff right, for his opponents. And uh, it is a show this episode. He shows like he was, he was a good dad, it was. You know, he... He wanted to save. Why well, wanted to save what was left of his daughter, and then by the end of this episode, oh well, it shows that uh, he traveled the world, and it shows that in this episode that uh, uh, Rion was riding with Kiri, with her on her father's back, uh, seeing the world. I'm jumping ahead here though, so seeing the world, and like well, when uh, that the, we show that they were crossing over China, seeing the Great Wall, or in Greece. He's saying that he's been over the world, so, and and the, with she explained with the, she's explained with the with the Kyoki, with the Kyokyo route, um, that it's very powerful. Was this is what uh, what Kirimaru uh, fears that it can absorb and expel unlimited amounts of demon power, like how like in the like in the epic finale of the first season how To was trying to like absorb all of his demon energy, but it was too overwhelming for her. Well, this here, that with the Kyokyo rune, it can absorb so much unlimited powers of of de of demon power. So this is what some of the what probably basically the thing. This is what his father fears, and saying that how his father and uh, Rion saying how his father cannot be satisfied unless he takes on a strong opponent. So it's you know which is saying because how he how we show, we show his flashbacks how he how he was ch uh, fighting against Toga how he's a very strong worthy opponent and he was seeing the same thing with the with our half demon princesses so he wanted to you know until he keeps on fighting a strong opponent so but Rio is, is telling them to uh, kill kill their fa kill their her father so because you know like I said she wants to save this world that she likes and also that um Kill her so that uh, she can be uh, so that she can be set free. Basically, you know, go into the afterlife. Basically, and so this is more. This is, and I'm just jumping all over the place because this has been a lot of a lot of things that's happened in this episode. First, we, we we then we see with with um with Riku like confronting like some more demons that are heading towards Mount the, the the mountain and and I say Riku he is a badass. Like I said before, he is a badass character. Like he, like he kills him with one swipe of his sword some demons, and then there's a whole bunch just po a whole bunch just uh, right behind him, and then just like jumping ahead, like I said, at the end where I jumped again, he kills that whole horde of demons. Like he's standing on top of a whole dead pile of demons. I'm like <laughs> Riku. I, I I like Riku. I enjoy Riku. Or is it now? I love Riku. He's a very badass character, and he's very funny at the same time as well. The way he talks to, to, to the these demon to, to anybody, you know. So Riku, he is a total badass character. <laughs> he's standing on top of a whole pile of dead uh, demon corpses. <laughs> so, and then we, and then, as I said, we explained that to how uh, Rion is. He, how she's already dead. She died like six hundred years ago. Although, like I said, I like to see what, how, how did she, how did she die though? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll explain how she died though. But, but here they don't explain. She said she just died. She died six hundred years ago. So, 
And and then you get the funny thing where uh, where Toad tried to hug her, but she's a spirit, so she can't. But she says she'll do it. She'll she'll, she'll she says she'll sa she'll save Rion. Um, then Cecil sees um, sees the the red the red thre the red string, you know, the, the the thread of fate, whatever. And to her, Noki, uh, Nak her Nakanaga is reacting to it. So basically, to sever the basically sever the ties between. Sever the ties between our uh, between Rio and, and Kitty Moto because this when she died uh, she's been feeding the dream Kitty Moto's been using the dream butterfly you know to see to see her in her dreams that's what it, he's been using it for so now so this but the, the red string has been uh been tied to has been has been uh tied to her to, to between to, between them. And we can we see we we see Kiri we see Kiri Maru, you know sitting there and it's, it is it was Bo saying that are you saying that you're finding your father's love annoying? <laughs> okay. Well, thing is though he did with the best intentions though, but maybe because he's just doing this overprotecting and all that stuff, so she she doesn't want to deal with it anymore, so she wants to be set free. So. So. And then she severs the severs. So it sort of severs the ties, and then she turns into this clay doll, which um, which is a vessel for his soul. It's which is interesting to think. This, this kind of had happened the same way, how that witch, that demon witch, whatever, uh, did the same thing to resurrect uh, Kikyo, where he made a clay. She was oh, Kikyo was resurrected by using a clay doll, but using also made from the from her uh, bones and graveyard soil. So this is kind of like the same way that happened with Kikyo, which is, I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, thing to see. And like Kiri, like Kiri Maru, like a, a a figure of Kiri Maru try hold, try holding her, holding her back, and then um, Rion breaks breaks free from from that clay vessel, and then disappears to her as a real person. She's not see through; she's a real person, just like Kikyo was, you know, like a, a specter or. Yeah, like a specter. That's what it was. Just like how Kikyo was, except though, with the difference is what the, the difference was that keeping Kikyo alive was all those spirit, those those soul collectors would give her souls to keep her alive. Here it's not the same thing though, but like I said, it's kind of the, the way, the same way of Kikyo though, but minusing the soul collectors though. Yeah, but so now she's has she has a a real body for now, and then we see the, and we see the um. That um, that that uh, that spirits that has with the pin with the pinwheel that's using for the the windmill of time. Because uh, forgot to mention, she uh, Rion also mentions the windmill of time. Because um, since Kirimaru um has been over the world though, but he hasn't been to a place that's beyond space and time. So Toa is saying um, hence um the future. So you know, once again, try to do that, uh, create that degenerate age. And we see, and we mentioned about that about that spear with the pinwheel, um, Akiru, which is using that using it supposed to use that pinwheel to activate the uh, the uh, windmill of time. We see that spirit there are watering just as Sashomu is flying with the hair, and and he's telling Jokin just to ignore it. <laughs> and then all the all that and demon energy from, from Mount Subi, like um, Mount Subi. How she's exp uh, expelled all that demon energy, and then returns into that flute. She, she's playing it while she's that. She's crying, saying farewell, uh, dad. And then we then we see the flashback of him riding on his dad's back, you know, traveling all over the world. I mean, it shows like seemed he was acting like Kitty Mario was acting like a good daddy you now and showing her the world. So, you know, this makes this makes uh, Kitty Mario an interesting villain. Well, not different. Not nothing like nothing like Naraku. Let's be one thing. Naraku was just, was just a cold-hearted, um, evil bastard. So, nothing comparing. No comparison there. So, but like as much as he like Kirimo, he wants to fight strong opponents. He wants to like if they're he doesn't fight them when they're uh, severely injured, like in the last season where he was playing with Toga. He has, he wants to fight. He wants to fight them at their best, and. It shows with the here with his daughter. It shows he was acting like a good dad. Yeah, he sealed her when she died. He wanted to act like in the best way possible. Like, okay, you can keep her soul here, so I can keep on seeing her in her dreams by using the dream butterfly. So he had good, he had good intentions. So, but 
But Rio just wants to be free of all this, you know, so she can just move on, you know, so. But that's what I thought that with Kirimoto, he's a very interesting uh, villain. Good, had good intentions, uh, good intentions, and all that stuff, though. And uh, Rio saying she wants to go with them, and with our with our with our trio, and then these demons just pop, just starts popping out, which kind of looked for a second. I was like, are those dinosaur T Rex uh, skulls? Because they kind of look kind of like that, do they? <laughs> I have to say, they kind they kind of look like it, but it's not though. There are there there are demons like I guess what um. Kirimo had um had was his Kirimo must have had just in case that's what he's saying. Then Toa she starts playing the flute, which is supposed to be it's called the uh, Star Slicer flute. Yeah, Star Slicer flute that was created from the Kiri, uh, Kiri Kyokyo root. So she's playing it. Toa plays it and it turns into her sword. This the which I thought that is a pretty cool looking sword. She doesn't know. Of course, used her sword using her Azuro Dragon Twin Dragon attack. Gets rid of them no problem. And, um. And, yeah, it's called, yeah, it's called, it's called the, Z Z the, if I may mispronounce the name, the, Z the Zelskion sword. And, yeah, you get another, like, another, uh, reference to, kind of like a parallel reference because, um, to now Toa's new sword, the Zelskion, is similar. It's, a t it's another twin sword that was, like, with the Bakusaken. That's the sword that Kirimoto uh, holds. So okay, it's kind of like sort of like the way how Inuyasha's Ted Saiga and Sashomaru's Ted Saiga, because once they were uh, well, first of all, they were first they were one sword held by their father, but then it was split in two. So here, they're, they're both both the Toa sword and Kirimoto's sword are both part of the same thing that came from the stars. So that kind of makes us over a little parallel uh, thing from the fir from the show, which like I said, same thing with with Kikyo being resurrected, same here with uh, Rion, and you get the same thing with the swords here. So that makes it kind of cool referencings, you know, referencings. Saying sorry, I'm gonna get my words right again. So after that, she takes out those demons, no problem with her sword. Saying that with such power, they say that how it can bring down, uh, it can bring down K uh, Kirimoto. And we just found out how um, uh, Toa is a carrying Rion. And then Sishomaru shows up. Um, so, yeah, so Sishomaru shows up. And this is where you get one of the things where, where, um, where they entered uh, Mount, Subi, Mount Subi, where um, that, that, th that, that phrase saying, um, Are you willing to protect the ones you love or are willing to let go of? Here is Sashomaru's telling uh, Setsuna, because now the dream butterfly appears. That uh, if now you have the th now you have the, the your new weapon that you can cut the the string right. Well, if you if she's telling if she's telling he's telling Setsuna that if you cut if you if you cut it, it will keep. Um, well, basically the dream butterfly. If you set the kill the dream butterfly because it shows right there, so. It will keep her alive, though, but this, but the silver scale curse will continue for will, will continue, and then you basically now you're on a time limit now because it'll soon spread through her body. So that's basically what a the thing are we who are we willing to protect and let go of? Are you willing, um, willing to look uh sacrifice you know sleep in order to protect her basically, and and. Sesame says, I will protect my mother. And then Sishomo takes his now uh, mended Tensega, slices the dream butterfly, and then now basically that time limit is, that time has now started. Because now we go back to the to the tree inside the tree of ages, and now it's turning completely red now since the dream butterfly is now severed. Now that silver scale curse is going to start, um, <clears throat> will start, um, uh, continuing on, speeding up faster because that was with the dream butterfly. It was slowing it down, but now without it, that was gonna continue on a regular process. And we come back with Rin. She's crying. We see the scales on her neck. Hopefully, this is like gonna start spraying again. And and then find how uh, more um, which um, Sashoma was asking Moroha, did you see Inu Inuyasha? 
<laughs> which is quite funny though. And um, and then after that, as per usual with Sashomo, he just leaves without another word. As of course, that's all. That's the whole thing with Sashomo. He always leaves without saying a word. <laughs> so, and then we go back with with Riku staying up, being a badass, thing, staying on top of those dead corpses of demons. And he's surprised to see um, Rion, and Rion recognizes him. So I guess he guess R Riku was born before she died. I guess because she knows who he is, so he she must have died before after Riku w was was created. And he's like, no, he can't he can't be in front of me because Kirimar will see. Because remember, what what Zero was saying to him, he she can see and hear through Kirimaru, through Riku because she was he was a part of him. That's why. So he's like, no, he can't. Otherwise, um. Kirimo will see, so... And I love this part here. <laughs> I love this part here. I thought this was the, 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 this was the, this was the funniest part of the episode. Where, since Toad knows, oh, um, so Kirimo can, can see and hear, right? Through Riku, right? Here, I'll pass on a message. So, uh, so she grabs Riku by the face and starts yelling in his face. She starts yelling in his face, saying, "Hey, Kitty Maru, we freed, <laughs> you, we, we we freed, uh, we freed Rion, <laughs> so we freed Rion and Monsube, so, <laughs> and is there any? <laughs> oh, yeah, she yeah, there is more. She we freed Rion, and if you if if you want to, um, God damn, I'm butchering up this the thing because I'm get, I'm getting too excited here because this is so funny." Yeah, if you got a problem with that, come and get us. There you go. Jeez. Yeah, I was laughing the whole because yeah, she's screaming. She, she's screaming in Riku's face to send to pass through Kirimaru, but like, Riku's face is like. <laughs> oh my god. That that was the that was the funniest part of the episode, or a little one of my funniest parts. One of the one of the funniest parts of I've seen on the on this uh series. <laughs> yeah, she starts screaming in his face, and his Greek was like, <laughs> Yeah, that, that was, that was hilarious. Yeah, so if you want to come, uh, you want to come and get us. So, but then, um, then R Rion ends up uh, going with Riku instead, so, and then they do the high five as usual, and then, um, to uh, Ses Sesuna, she now, since the dream butterfly is now gone now, Cessna uh, finally passes out and starts sleeping, which is nice because she hasn't because she hasn't slept for she hasn't slept in ten years, basically yeah because there were there were there were four when Toa was separated from from Setsuna and everything has happened so yeah so yeah Setsuna hasn't slept for ten years so that makes sense so other way it was kind of cute the way she just passes out and starts sleeping now. So yeah, well this so this episode this well, this took a little longer than expected because there was a lot that was going on in here. So yeah, so I explained with the with the with the with the Kill Kion root and uh, turning into uh, Toa's new sword, the Zenskian the Zen Zenskian excuse me, the Zenskian sword or the flute that's called the Star Slicer flute, and it's a bit more about Kirimoto, um, his relationship with his daughter Rion, and about the degenerate age. And um, Riku said Riku being a badass, and that hilarious moment where Rito was to start yelling in his face to get through to Kitty Maru. I really that was that was hilarious, <laughs> and just read the reaction on Riku's face that was just priceless. <laughs> so, and Sesame finally gets to sleep now, and also now also they also now have a time limit now since the soul scale since the curse that the the ties between that has now been lifted. Now Rin is now Rin's silver scale silver scale curse now is going to start resuming as usual. So they they're going to have, uh, have to waste no time and hurry up and uh, kill uh, Zero in order to bring the to break the curse. So yeah, so a lot happened this episode. So I got to give this episode a really good kiss. This was an absolute ride of an episode. So I got to give this a thumb a thumbs up on this one. Yeah, the girl, the girl's name Rion. I, I really, I really did enjoy this episode. It was another really great episode. Absolutely awesome episode. Gotta give a thumbs up to this. So yeah, so that's episode five of season two. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see more now. See what happens next. And I got, and I gotta get to um, after this, then I gotta get to uh, discussing the preview for episode six next. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you next time.